is Vijay Raman and uh, this is my seventh video on financial planning tacit knowledge series and uh, today I'm going to talk about clients investment planning that will take place after your third meeting when you build a design for your plan now remember uh, this is the actually in this type so you actually cancel on, on the third meeting you have canceled out the you know after a third meeting or on the third meeting you have canceled out you know you have the discussion with your client and you canceled out the the you know um, what about that where uh, that that your client did not like or your client had objection to it or you have come up with some sort of solutions with your client now on, on the designing of the plan there is only two plans that you're going to make out um, or you, uh, you're going to you're going to prepare so then the, you're going to prepare two plans for your client plan a and plan b in plan a you will have everything um, that is um, based on your client, based on your client wants. And plan B, you will have based on the recommendations you you know you are suggesting. So uh, plan A is basically whatever the objective and uh, uh, and the goals your client have. And plan B is that the, your recommendations. Uh, excuse me. Your recommend your recommendations. Addition to your um, addition to your whatever the additional comments or recommendations that you're providing will go to plan B. So at the end of the preparing the plan, both plans, you will compare them side by side. Now, before I get to that, um, what I want to talk about is that the um, I want to actually segment them. Um, section by section and then talk about it so that you have in-depth knowledge well you don't have in-depth knowledge but you would have uh, my way of doing it uh, my way of uh, uh, doing getting things done how do i get things done um, and how do i do prepare for my clients so basically what is happening here is that they you learn a new approach perhaps you are doing it perhaps you are not but something that new so what I do is that the I would actually prepare each section separately uh, within the plan itself. So what I do is that the I would have my investment plan, and then I would have my uh, insurance plan, then a mortgage plan, and then in the within the mortgage plan I would have probably an in a built into one in a banking plan. What does that mean? Is that you would have your checking account, your uh, mortgage account, your um, say, uh, some sort of savings savings account, and a line of credit and, and, a, and a loan if you do have one built into one, you know, one plan. I call it a debt planning. Okay, so you would have rather than a mortgage planning. So I would have I would have uh, investment planning number one. Number two is insurance planning. Number three it's debt planning. Number four is estate planning. So once I have these four, uh, what are we lacking? So one thing we are lacking is that the is the uh, the plan within the estate planning itself is that the um, the one of the objective that we often miss out is that the 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 intergenerational wealth transfer that will take place for every client, especially most, especially high net worth client, uh, there are some sort of asset that uh, rolls over to the next generation after the. Um, after your client uh, deceased or after you know after the um, uh, my friends have a, you know my friends call it a different name anyway but I won't get to that but uh, uh, at some point uh, I would say after the termination of your life cycle so um, so something that that is something that we will, will all face whether it's tomorrow whether it's 30 years down the road whether, whether it's 50 years down the road at some point we all have to die and that is the truth and there are some truth in lifetime 
in, in our life, um, it is debt and in a financial life tax and investment growth and so forth um, and inflation. So we, we will face with this truth at some point in our life. Um, but there are some truths that we face all the time. What are those uh, truths? What are those um, um, challenges that we face? What are those um, aspects of financial, uh, financial um, um, components that we face with? So one of the components that we often face with inflation, often you have to make sure that the any rate assumption you make in your financial plan is actually a real rate of return rather than nominal rate of return. So if you are doing a financial plan for investment planning, beware that the that plan is based on the real rate of return. And um, if you are doing some sort of uh, um, some sort of insurance projection at some point, uh, please also be sure the approach that you are taking, whether it's a combined approach, whether it's income approach, whether it's expense approach, beware that the you would have to deal with the real rate of return again and again and again over and over and over time. So nominal rate of return really doesn't mean much when it comes to financial planning. Uh, it probably means a lot um, when it comes to um, you know someone bragging about their uh, investment growth. Uh, but again, uh, that's something that you would have to think about it. Uh, what is a nominal rate of return? A nominal rate of return that allows uh, simply, simply someone to understand the rate of return they received on the money they invested on uh, either in a particular stock, either in a particular funds, either in a particular um, investment vehicle. So this is something, that, or probably a derivative, something they invested their money to. So beware where they invested their money. The without in a simple form of return is a nominal rate of return without being adjustment without any any sorts of adjustment the rate that you receive from the from the from the investment it is actually the minimum rate of return but your planner has to or your investment advisor has to adjust that to reflect real rate of return so investment plan make sure that your planner build that investment investment plan based on the real rate of return so when you choose an investment plan, or what, you know, what is it you have to do before you get to that level? Well, A, you have to remember I talked about the, you have to do some sort of risk profiling uh, on your client. So this is where it comes handy, is that the, the scientific approach that you, you have chosen to complete a risk, uh, a complete risk profile for your client, or, or often in the in investment industry, it is known as KYC, know your client. Okay, so you'd have to know your client very well and beware because of this know your client issue, often you actually, you know, you'll actually deal, deal with um, internal auditing and often uh, um, other regulatory agencies that you often be, uh, often that you challenge that you face with them is that they know your client issue. And uh, this, this, this is something um, I actually um, I actually want to talk about in the next video. The compliance of the um, have to be compliant uh, when when to do uh, investment planning. So let's talk about the basic ideas. Uh, wh where do we invest our money for our client? If you are uh, if you are not a fee based planner. Or even if you are a fee-based planner, often you could do your plan fee-based, and then you could also uh, manage your client wealth. Um, so in this case, so be aware of that the how you plan yourself. Um, again, um, as a client, what as a client, what you are looking for from your financial planner or your investment advisor in this case is that the how they invest your money, whether they're efficient. Be aware if you're not efficient, if, then you, are, you you may not be effective. Right. So if your investment is not effective, then you might have a problem with your retirement plan. So, so after so your retirement plan comes in, actually somewhere between um, right after your debt planning, so it's on the fourth planning. So there are actually five integral integral plan for your financial planning. A, which is your investment planning. B, is your insurance planning. C, is your more debt planning. D, is your retirement planning. And five, number five, is your estate planning. Excuse me. So the state, um, 
retirement planning is basically all three steps that I talked about, the investment planning, insurance planning, and debt planning will reflect, will actually combine these three will built into your uh, retirement planning. Retirement planning is basically looking at, uh, looking at, um, looking, looking at future at a present value. So that is what retirement planning is. So today you are going to take uh, some sort of telescope or some sort of, uh, uh, you know, uh, something that you can look into, look far, right? Um, and the same thing, same concept applies that the, when it comes to retirement planning, you are looking ahead of 60, 70 years down the road, often 30 to 40 years down the road, and see what is, you know, what is feasible, what income, what level of income can you sustain your life with. So living a life is something, and living it comfortably is another thing. Living with peace is another thing. So our plan, our goal is to live a life with, with financial liquidity, with financial solvency, with financial comfort, right? And that's what we do all this work for. The reason we work so hard, we wake up in the morning or some we work at the night, some people work during the day, some people work three hours a shift. Often I used to meet doctors that they have, you know, they work um, 15 hours a day. You know, often I met um, I met business owner that they they, meet, they work day and you know often uh, two days straight right often um, they go on right so this is something that you need to look at often you have uh, you know you wake up at uh, if you're a teacher you wake up at uh, you know six in the morning maybe earlier five in the morning and then you have to commute further and you have to do your uh, work to get paid and then you're hard working. You, you, your your um, your hardworking money is being invested in the market. So be aware is that the the type of advisor you're choosing, uh, whether it's a planner or investment advisor, whatever they uh, you know, uh, be aware how they're investing your money, right? So uh, there are a few things if you are if you are listening to this video, if you are an investment advisor, if you're a planner, uh, these are the things that you need to pay attention to. Uh, uh, do what is your client wants, not what is it you do. It is your recommendation. So you can only provide recommendation, and then it is up to them whether they follow or not. But um, you know, but be be aware and be sure to show them what the pros and cons uh, of your recommendations, and it is the, their final decision what they do, whether whether to choose or not to choose. Um, so that is something that a uh, big question. Should, as a client, what you are faced with is that the whether to choose the recommendation and whether or not to choose the recommendation. So that is something that you would have to make a decision on your own. And at some point, we are actually uh, faced with that challenge. We have to make our own decision what to do with our current uh, choice. Because it, it is your life, it is your money, it is your retirement, it is your mistake. So you'd have to make that decision comfortably, whether you could make the decision ultimately whether it will benefit you or not. That's something that you would have to live with, something that you have to make a decision with make a decision for uh, so so let's let's get back to um, the choosing the right investments how do I know um, what, what do I know about um, about my client as a planner so I know so far that he could take this much risk I know this is this is what he can afford to spend for investment purpose I know this is what it is that um, you know, I know this is my KYC tells me that um, this is what I know about my client. But is this really enough? There are something called uh, professional judgment that you would have to apply, um, and, the, and and something that if you if you do if you do apply your professional judgment, you will come to know is that the the fact is that the often and often it is. Your recommendation that your client is relying on, um, if, especially if it comes to investments, right? So, how do you choose the investment for them? Now, that's a very difficult task. We have no way of predicting market, and we have no way of knowing future. But one thing we know for sure: financial statements. One thing we know, I, I know for sure, is that the past uh, doesn't tell much about future, but sometimes. Past, uh, 
performance can often indicate management intentions, management decisions, and type of management that's, that is in place to execute the investments uh, if it is a fund, if it is a mutual fund, segregated funds, or ETF, in fact, uh, ex exchange traded funds. Whatever you choose, uh, please be sure that they, you know about the management. Uh, who are the management, who are the mastermind behind that mutual funds or ETF or even SEG funds. Whatever it is, SEG, SEG funds simply means segregated funds, uh, investment contra um, contracts, EVIC. So what is it, um, what is it, what is it you are looking for when you're investing in? Because obviously there is no way of predicting future. So there's a few things that we know is that you would have to take a look at it is like where are the major holdings for that funds, where the money is being invested to, right? And whether, you know, what, what level of um, assurance they're receiving uh, from the auditors. Often it's a good idea to know more about the internal auditing that the, the qualified, uh, sorry, for non-qualified opinions from the auditors. Uh, so that in that, <coughs> an internal auditing will provide you with more knowledge about the firm, um, how they do their business, what kind of control procedures in place. That's something that will allow you to learn more about the client's, inter the actually firm's management. So if you're reading an internal audit, you, it will tell you more about the, the fund management, how, how they're managed effectively or not, uh, and what kind of control procedures are in place. Um, uh, what kind of MER fees, management expense ratios are uh, you are exposed with? Um, it, it is true that you know if a fund has a higher management fee, often uh, there, there there might be a reason for it. So take a look at the MER fees. Take a look at the past return. What kind of return you are looking for? Take a look at the historic performance. Uh, uh, often in a mutual fund, fund <coughs> industry, it is not. Excuse me. It is known as the um, return from inception, right? So you have to take a look at the, this, in, this component when you look for investments. So uh, especially mutual, mutual funds and seg funds. So take a look at those, okay? Uh, read more about the uh, auditing scope, right? Find out uh, what type of auditing opinions are provided, whether it's a qualified opinion or non-qualified opinions by the auditors. Who are the auditors? How often the auditors have been changed in the, in, within the um, fund itself, right? Um, whether, the, you know, if, if after it, often it is an indication if an auditor who actually did the external auditing and then a year later, so about two years later, they became the internal auditing, uh, that could be an issue. So you'd have to take a look at that. Um, this is something will give you some sort of accounting background, um, accounting uh, knowledge um, that will um, allow you to understand the management intention for that fund, what they're planning, planning to do with that money, and what that money is held, and uh, what what are the rate of return that you're uh, uh, expecting, expecting uh, based on the stock that are uh, based on the investment stock that are purchased with the firm's asset. So, um, and what are the firm's liability? You would have to take a look at that. And, uh, you know, is the MER fees, does it really add up to, um, uh, add up to the investment aspect, uh, whether the based on the return that you receive or that were received uh, for that particular fund. So my next, my next issue is that the, uh, what is it, what is it you do with the, with the other stuff. So let's let's leave out the stock portions for some of the time. So what what I want to talk about our next discussion on um, the stock rather than mutual funds. So we'll talk about the stock. This is something that your investment advisor should be paying attention to. Uh, so again, let's uh, fo let's follow my next video, video number seven. Please feel free to read my book, Financial Freedom: A Fictional Financial Plan. Thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.